All right. Um, today I'm going to do the part three for this, uh, SPM two thousand nineteen, uh, MF paper. So yeah, this one will be the part three. Uh, which is the last last part of, uh, this paper. So let's begin with this. Let's continue with the question number ten here. All right. Um. For this question, actually, I do make a separate video to explain about these questions. But over here, I will just like explain it again. Um, so basically, how to get this four mark actually is a lot harder than you think because this four mark actually is for part one and part two. Okay, the first thing is if you scroll back to your formula list, you will realize that uh you don't have the formula for tangent a over two, so you kind of need to um change it yourself. So we, at least we know something. Uh, tangent a over two over uh is actually equals to sine a over two over cos a over two. Yeah, this is the simple formula for tangent x equals to sine x over cos x, isn't it? All right. So if you understand this one, so right now my objective is: can I actually get the sine a over two and cos a over two or not? So in order to get both of these half, half angle for sine and cos. So what you need to do over here is um, you just need to use the cos two a formula to form it. So okay, so let's say I use x over here. Okay, so if cos two x, basically we have three different formula for cos two x, right? The double angle for cos. So we have cos square x minus sine square x, the first formula. The second formula you can change the cos square become uh into the one minus sine square. If after you change this one into one minus sine square, you will get our uh, uh, one minus sine square, one minus two sine square x. Or you can change the sine square become one minus cos square. Then you have two cos square x um, minus one. So basically, you have three different formula for cos two x, and these three formula are given, so no need to worry so much. But what I want you to pay attention is at the second and third. So this is the this is both of this. We're going to use it. Um, to actually get our sine half angle and cos half angle here, so I'm going to uh, tell you uh, which one to get uh, sine half. So obviously you see uh, on this side you only have sine over here. So I'm going to use this one to get my sine uh, half angle, which is a over two, and then you can guess it. So I will use this one to get my cos a over two. But how? Okay, let's begin with this one. Okay, so actually it's quite simple. Um, so bas basically, if I want to get the sine a over two, what I will do over here is I will let x become a over two. Then I will sub into all the x here. You can see, so I will have cos two a over two equals to one minus two sine square a over two. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to make the sine a over two as a subject. So Okay, then I will move around things. So two and two, I can simplify it. here. Only left cos a. So I will move the whole two sine square a over two to the other side. This is my angle. This is one minus. I move my cos a to the other side. I will get cos a over here, and then definitely I can move my two become over two, and then definitely I can move my square. If I move my square, it will become the square root. So you will need to use the same methods to actually get the. Uh, cos a over two by by using the same method. So anyway, so I I write it down first. So later maybe you will need to use it. So this is square root one minus cos a over two. Okay. So if I do the same method for my cos one, uh, for cos half angle, let me rewrite again. Cos two x equals to two cos square x minus one, isn't it? So right now, um, I let x equals to a over two for my cos. So this one I will get cos a, because uh, just like like just now I plug in a over two into x here. I simplify. I like I get cos a. This one I will get two cos square a over two minus one. All right. Then I will move my minus one. I will get cos a plus one. I move my two. I will get over two. I move my square. I will get square root. So it equals to Cos a over two, All right? So it's over, um, square root of uh cos a plus one over two. Okay, this is how I get the half angle for sine and cos by using the double angle of uh cos. All right, then what you need to do is um, 
yeah you, you need to at least you know some things um like square root a over b i can say is a square root a over square root b i can separate them if i want so what i will do over here is you can see there's a square root 2 here and square root 2 here since this is divide if a over square root 2 over b over square root 2 we can actually simplify the square root 2 but why if you want to know the why basically you can change the divide divide sign into uh, divide b over square root 2 then divide will change to multiply it will become square root 2 over b then you can see i simplify it i get a over b so this is what i want to do now okay if you get the idea basically it's just solving the algebra so like this one so i will cancel out these two so i will get square root um you can join them together or you want to separate them also can it doesn't matter so i, I will get one minus cos a over uh one plus cos a all right but then my objective is i want to get something like one minus cos a over sine a so what i will do over here is in order to get sine a at the denominator my objective is because this one if i separate them you can see um this one basically is a square root one minus cos a over square root uh, one plus cos a so what i want to do is i want to make this one become sine square if i can make this one become sine square then i square root the sine square i get sine a at the bottom so how am i going to make it become sine square so which is i will multiply um i will basically i will multiply um square root um one minus cos a yeah there's a bit not enough space let me scroll here a little bit so i will multiply square root one minus cos a for top and bottom we can always do it for the fraction isn't it so so we know square root a multiply square root b it will become square root a b isn't it so yeah so bottom over here i will get square root a plus b a minus b is a a square minus b square All right top is the same thing so i get one minus cos a i kind of get the thing at the top already so bottom i need to do one more thing is we know one minus cos square a basically equals to sine square a isn't it so it's equals to sine square a now square and square root i cancel out i get the final answer this is what you'll get so for <laughs> i guess it's about two mark <laughs> So yeah, congratulations. You spent about five minutes to get this two mark. Um, so yeah, so then I will say proven because the question actually asked me to prove, right? So at the end, I will just say proven like this. All right, so it's not like extremely difficult, but it's, uh, it's definitely, it doesn't worth two mark. <laughs> it should worth more than two mark. All right, so I hope you can understand my explanation. If you can't, I actually make a separate video for this part. So literally, I actually spent eight minutes for me to actually explain about this part. So yeah, you need to practice yourself because in your exam, I, I assume you can do slightly faster for these two mark questions. All right, then we will go to the part two over here. Hence, without using the calculator, find the tangent 15. All right, so you see the word hangs, it gives you very good tips over here. It's like, okay, if I see hangs, that means I need to use the answer on the top to solve it. So, but then this is uh, a over two. So I want to think a over two, I want to get 15 degree because they say tangent 15, isn't it? This is tangent a over two, right? So a over two, I want to get 15. So my a must be 30 degree. So this is the first very good tips over here. So what I will do uh, over here, let me just erase this part so that I can use the empty space here. So therefore I will say, okay, then this is tangent 30 over two equals to one minus cos 30 over sine 30. All right, so then here actually is tangent 15, isn't it? Because 30 degree divided by two is 15. Okay, what is cos 30? Cos 30 is basically square root three over two. If you get the, you have the new calculator, you should be easily get this one, or else you kind of need to remember the triangle. I'm not going to explain about this part too much here. So, so why is sine 30? Sine 30 basically uh, is one over two. So in order to solve this thing, um, we kind of need to make them the same denominator. So, okay, so this is one over one in the uh, time two, time two, then the same denominator is two minus two over two, uh, divided by half. So what I want to do is divided by half, 
what we will do is it will become multiply 2 over 1 2 and 2 I simplified my final answer is 2 minus 3 because they ask you to state your answer in this form so yeah this is how you get the answer in that form I guess this one should be 2 mark I'm not sure maybe it's 3, three mark and 1 mark but this one doesn't seem like uh, just one mark because normally one mark you can straight away write, write out the answer maybe if you have any faster way you please feel free to share with me all right um okay then we done about the solving part and and then all right so we go to graph thing all right they ask you to sketch the graph y equals to negative uh, 3 over 2, two sine a it's quite easy this one so since the question asked me to sketch i will just sketch like this this is my uh this is my a it's not x because there's no x there all right only have a and y this one will be my y so you should know this one is an amplitude 3 over 2 so since the 3 over 2 is amplitude that's mean your height over here will be 3 over 2 the uh your minimum will be negative 3 over 2 all right then sine graph is quite easy we should we can actually easily draw like this but this is not the positive sine graph this is negative sine graph so we kind of need to flip over the pattern so this is what happened when sine graph go into the negative um yeah this is min maximum and minimum all right and then because it's just one a so it's quite simple this is two pi this is one pi and then this is half pi uh will be half pi this one will be uh, 1.5 pi so which is 3 over 2 pi all right so yeah this is just uh, quite easy hence using the same axis uh, sketch the suitable straight line to find the number of solution uh, so you, you know number of solution here actually mean the intersection point so this question actually asks you to find uh, what's the intersection point between the straight line and and this uh, sine, sine graph so we kind of need to solve this equation so in order to solve this one um i must be able to substitute the y into into that but then the problem is i i don't see any y here so it's worrying me a little bit so um but i see something like tangent half angle even though it's called tangent half angle so what i will do is i'm going to change the cotangent become one over tangent a over two because we have an a over two on the top right so maybe we need to use it this is one minus cos a and then it equals to negative a over 2 pi so yep so what i want to do is okay so here you have tangent a over 2 if i this is over 1 isn't it if i flip over the whole thing become 1 over tangent a over 2 what i will need to do is i will flip over the fraction also so it will become um it will become a sine a over 1 minus cos a do you get the idea because the whole thing over one isn't it? it is equal to this thing so if i flip over this side then i just flip over the other side side so it's uh, quite straightforward so this one will be sine a over one minus cos a this is one minus cos a equals to negative a over two pi so one minus cos a and one minus cos a i can easily simplify it and then we have a sine a here we almost got it but then the y must be negative 3 over 2 so what i want to do is uh, i will multiply negative 3 over 2 for both sides so this one will become uh, multiply negative 3 over 2 then now i have negative 3 over 2 sine a so i can call the whole thing here as a y All right this side negative and negative are simplified become positive um so i will get um okay i will get 3a over 4 pi so yeah i kind of need some coordinates here so yeah so I'll just draw a table by myself uh i don't have x sorry uh, a and y so i just say when a equals zero you start plug in the zero use the calculator you should get y is zero as well then we say okay what if uh, my a is two pi then i will do just do okay three two pi over four pi pi and pi i cut this one and this one cut i get three over two all right nice then i have two coordinates here so in order to make you see clearly a little bit so i'm going to use the red color zero zero is over here two pi at three over two two pi will have three over two here so i'm going to connect over them uh connect these two coordinates all right and then they ask about number of solution so i say just now number of solution basically mean the intersection point here how many intersection point here one two so therefore only two number of solution or just write to two then okay so yeah it's 
Yeah, they ask you to state the number of solutions, you can say, say about two. Alright, so yeah, not too bad for these questions. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay, linear law, as usual, I will not actually draw out the exactly graph for you, but I will just uh, try my best to explain this one to make sure you can understand it. Alright, so based on the table to construct um, log 10x and log 10y, so basically uh, if the question gives you something like this, you should be very happy because this is a very important tips here. And sometimes they do not give you this, but you still need to do it yourself. Okay, so, so I have the new table for log 10x and log 10y. <laughs> Please forgive my ugly line. Alright, then what I want to do here is I will just show you some sample. So I will just use my calculator log 10 and then I insert 0 0.34. So I will have log 10 and then 0 0.34. And then I, yeah, I will get negative 0 0.47. I will just recommend you to actually use two decimal place should be more than enough because our scale over here is just a 0 0.1 unit. So that means at the graph paper there, you maximum can see one more decimal only. So you no need to actually write until three decimal place, which I think is a bit unnecessary. Then for y, I will do the same thing. I will just do log 10, 47.68. So it will be 47.68. So I have 1.68. Uh, then I will do the same thing for 0 0.43. Log 10, 0 0.43. Then I will get negative 0 0.37. And then I will do the same thing again. So log 10, 25.12. And then I will get 1.40 and so on. So you're going to finish it yourself. I'm not going to do for you. So I just give you an example how to do only. All right. And then they ask you to plot log 10 against uh, log 10 y again, log 10 x. So basically you need to take out the graph paper and then you're going to draw these two exit for you. And then you must be careful where, whether you have the negative value for x or y or not. So in this case, I assume you only have x, uh, negative x value. So maybe the exit will be slightly middle a little bit. So this one will be your log 10x. And then this one will be a log 10y. But then I think log 10y, maybe you don't have negative. I'm not sure. Uh, after you finish it, you should know. So this is a uh, log 10y. All right, then they actually give you a skill you must follow. Uh, and then use your ruler to measure two centimeter for 0 0.1 unit. So basically you have something like, okay, make sure here is two centimeter. If you're using graph paper, definitely it will, it will be two centimeter. So it will be 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and so on. All right, 0 0.4. So here is negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.2. Uh, I believe you need to uh, up to until negative 0 0.5. Okay, so you need to until a negative 0 0.5. So you, you, uh, you cannot draw this. You basically need to like draw every skill ni nicely, okay? And then the, for the Y, there actually is like two centimeter uh, for 0 0.2 on the Y axis. So basically you need to uh, measure about two centimeter and then this is 0 0.2, this is 0 0.4 and so on. All right, this is make sure it's two centimeter each. This one is 0 0.6 and so on. Then after that, you just plot all the coordinates uh, onto the graph and then you will realize it's, it's a straight line so nothing very fancy here and actually draw the line of best fit so you just connect the line i believe you touch uh most of the point but i want to say something is whenever you draw the linear law question you do the linear law question you want to make sure your line must always touch the vertical exit because later you need the c value uh, to solve your equation All right then after that yeah you just draw the line uh, I'm not sure it's like this or not. Yeah, this is just a random line huh? because some students might argue why, how come my line is not the same as yours? This is just an example, okay? Then they ask you to find the A and B. Okay, this is what I'm going to teach you, which is a fine mark over here. So you have an equation over here. You see carefully, you have an equation over here, uh, which is Y equals to A over... I hope this is a B multiplied square root X is not the root B. Or maybe it's a root B because it's a small letter of B. Uh, I hope the question actually can write the things nicely. Okay, we assume it is the root B. Okay, what is the meaning of root B is like this? Uh, let's say you have Q root, right? Q root X, X will become 1 over 3. But if this is 3 multiplied square root X, then this is 3 multiplied X power 1 over 2. So I'm a bit uh, curious what is this, but it's 
this B actually look a, a bit smaller so I guess it's the root okay so okay so I will add the log for it so this is log 10 y and here I will add the log 10 also this is a over um, x power 1 over b all right and then log rule tell me what log rule actually tell me that um, divide I can change to minus this is log 10 a minus uh, log 10 x 1 over b all right then I will just uh, rewrite the thing into the uh, y equals to mx plus c which is the straight line um, so 1 over b I will move to the front so it's 1 over b log 10 x plus log 10 a so from here you should be able to see this is my y this is my m gradient this is my x this is my c so just now that's why just now it's so important that uh, I actually ask you to touch here because you're going to make the log 10 a equals to this value example if my c equals to 0 0.3 so what I will do is I will just say my log 10a is 0 0.3. So you're going to read from your graph, see what value they touch at the vertic well, vertical exit there. Then a equals to 10 power of 0 0.3. And then you will just use the calculator and then you will get the answer. Definitely, I do not know what is the y your vertical intercept. So this is just uh, the random number I, I say. So okay, then you will get okay 1.999. So which is 2. Okay, this is just an example, and then and then you want to find about b, right? Because okay, b we do not have the b only. We have one over b is my gradient. So this one actually is quite straightforward. In order to get gradient, you use the gradient formula, right? Y two minus y one over x two minus x one. So you can just simply choose any two coordinate from the table and then to solve it. But normally in the linear law topics, uh, we will actually um, draw a triangle to indicate these two coordinates I take. So example, if I take this coordinate and this coordinate, I'm going to draw a triangle like this to show that I actually take these two coordinates to actually find my gradient. So then you just say, what is M? Your M is one over B, right? It's just one over B equals to, then you plug in the coordinate, something like, okay, 1.68 minus 1.4 over, um, negative 0 0.47 minus negative 0 point uh, become plus 37 and then you solve it move around solve the algebra you should be able to get a b answer easily okay do let me know in the comment below if you still do not understand how to do this okay then maybe i can remake uh, another video uh, for these questions all right so because here i don't have any graph paper now so yeah this is basically how to do linear law i for me is an extremely easy question so make sure in the exam you must score this all right then we go to the kinematics um in igcc they call kinematic i think SBM they call motion along the straight line so yeah let's have a look on this question a particle move along the straight line a particle move along the straight line such that the velocity is given by this equation yeah we have some equation here which is nice um, t cubed minus 4t squared plus 3t where t is a time the second after passing through fixed point O. This sentence is extremely important because this sentence actually tell you uh, when time equals to zero, uh, displacement will be zero. Okay, um, but for SPM it's not so important but if you are taking a higher level, you will need to differentiate uh, cos or exponent. You might need to use this one to find c but SPM I think is fine. Alright, so Okay, find the initial accelerations of the particle. Initial is a very important keyword. It tells you when time equals to zero. Initial means at the beginning. At the beginning, time will always equal to zero. But we have to know how to find A. So we have V. So please remember about this diagram. S, V, A, displacement, velocity, acceleration. In order to get uh, from S go to V, you need to differentiate S. The S, D, T will equal to V v want to go to a that's mean you have v you want to find a you need to dvd t so i will do the same thing for this side so in order to get v you need to integrate a in order to get s you need to integrate v all right so right now i have v i want to go a i need to differentiate so i will say dv dt then i will just differentiate 3 t squared minus 8 t plus 3 Right, so initial that's mean when t equals to zero, so a equals to zero minus zero plus three, which is three. Done. Two mark. Very easy. So this is part A. Alright, part B, find the time interval when the acceleration of a particle is less than six. 
So when A is less than 6, they will ask about time interval. That means you must add an inequality symbol here. So I have 3t squared minus 8t plus 3 less than 6. So definitely you know I need to move the 6 to this side and you will solve it. So become minus 3. Alright, so then I will just factorize it as usual. Uh, this is 3t and t and then this one will be 3 and 1 minus and plus. Right, so integrality you cannot straight away say okay this one less than zero and then this thing less than zero, no such thing. Alright. Integrality for quadratic you kinda of need to draw out this thing and then write the value. This is three and negative one over three. You just solve it, you should know you will get three for t and negative one over three here. So less than that means at the between here. So your t interval should be negative one over three to three. But then this is time. Can we start from zero uh, negative value for time? There's no negative one hour or negative three o'clock. So therefore, therefore I will start from zero. Because they, they already tell you the particle begin with the origin, which is when time equals zero. So I will just add, I will just change the negative uh, uh, three into the zero. So I guess this one will be my, yeah, this one will be my um, time interval. Another two mark. C. The time in the second when the particle stop instantaneously. Stop means what? Stop actually means velocity equals zero, right? So basically, quite simple. We have the v equation at the beginning. So we just make it equals zero. And then they ask you to find the time. Okay, this two mark is another extremely easy thing. Um, so, okay, so when v equals zero, so uh, t is q minus 4t square minus 4t square plus 3t equals 0 then I need to factorize out the t I will get t square minus 4t plus 3 equals 0 and then I need to factorize completely here so this one should be um, t minus 3 t minus 1 so basically I have uh, three different time so I have, I know they will stop when time equals 0 time equals to 1 and time equals to 3 but over here does the particle uh, does the question mention any time the first stop or second time they stop the question doesn't say anything they just say find the time so yeah this is all the time the particle will stop all right so d the total distance travel uh, by the particle until the particle return to the fixed point o well, this okay I will say this one is a little bit challenging compared to the ABC ABC is just like the bonus mark question which is extremely easy All right um okay so we want to know when actually the particle going to return to the O okay return to the O tell me what our well, s must equal to zero because at origin displacement always equal to zero but the problem is I don't have any s equation so in order to get s right I kind of need to integrate our velocity all right integrate velocity dt so I will just insert all my velocity equation which is t cubed minus 4t square plus 3t dt Right, so I will just do the normal uh, integration. Um, cube power plus one become t power four divided by four. Uh, power plus one three over three. Power plus one two t square over two plus c. Okay, like what I say just now. Uh, at the origin this cell displacement equals zero. Then time will equal to zero. So you try to plug in the zero 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 in the over here, then you get your c equals to zero. So in SBM, most of the time c is just zero. So this is my s equation after I solve it because c is just zero here. Um, okay, so then, okay, I want to know when actually the particle is going to return to the fixed point O for the second time. Find the total distance travel. Okay. Okay, you have some problem. Even though I make the s equals to zero here, by solving this equation is uh, a little bit troublesome also. So you have something like t squared over four minus four t over three plus three over two. Maybe you can use the calculator to actually uh, do this. But what I will do, I because it's four ma, I think just doing this one uh, uh, just a bit too much. What I will do is something like this. The particle actually start at origin. The particle start here. So whenever they want to return here, they must go until somewhere and then make U-turn and then stop here. So they ask about total distance, right? So what I will do here is I want to find when the particle uh, make U-turn. So 
at least I know whenever particle want to make U-turn, the velocity will equal to zero. Okay, then the particle will make U-turn again. So we actually we solved just now. The particle make U-turn when time equals to one and three. So okay, this is the first time they make the U-turn, and then they're going to move until second time, then they make U-turn again, and then stop there. So this is the reason why now I read the question carefully. Total distance traveled by the particle until the particle return to the fixed point O the second time. So they do not want the third time. This is the first time they begin here. They stop at the origin. So, um, okay, let me double confirm because they use the word return is a bit confusing. Total distance traveled by the particle until the particle return to the fixed point O for the second time. Okay, I guess they ask, they want about the second time over here. Okay, so what I will do here is, yeah, I have all the time. They make the U-turn. So what I want to do here is, yeah, I, I quite, I need to find out where is the particle when, uh, when time is one. All right, then I can estimate the distance. Okay, so, okay, S1, this is one over four minus four over three plus three over two, because one is actually quite straightforward. And then I use the calculator, one over four minus, minus four over three plus three over two. Right, so, 15 uh, 5 over 12 all right that's mean i know particle from origin the when time equals to 1 here the particle actually stop at uh s equals to 5 over 12. that's mean here they travel 5 over 12, 12 here and they make the u-turn and then they will stop at uh, they doesn't stop at origin they will go straight until time equals to 2 the particle actually make u-turn again so i want to know where is it so what i will do here is i'm going to do about s2 so S2, this is uh, 16 over 4 minus 3, 8 is 32 over 3 plus 4 will be 12 over 2. Then this is 4 minus 32 over 3 plus uh, 6. So, okay, negative 2 over 3. That means the particle will make you turn again and negative 3 or negative 2 or oh, displacement. This is displacement, all right? negative 2 over 3. All right, now I can get a total distance if I get the pattern like this. So if I want to get a total distance, so what I will do is, okay, from 0 to time equals to 1 here, then move 5 over 12. And then plus, I want to know from 5 over 12 to negative 2 over 3, how far is the whole journey here? Basically, you plus together, right? This one is uh, 5 over 12 plus 2 over 3. Isn't it? Because here is 5 over 12, and then here will be here will be 2 over 3. Alright, and then lastly, he's going to move another 2 over 3 to stop here. So this one will be my total distance travel. So this is 10 over 12 plus 4 over 3. So yeah, 10 over 12 plus 4 over 3. So yeah, this is um 13 over 6. Okay, so this is the total uh, in meter, isn't it? So I will just leave in meter. Alright, so because just now I try to make s equals to 0, I want to know when actually the particle stop here, but I realized um the question doesn't ask me to find how long it will do that, so I kind of no need to solve the complicated equation to try to get out. Actually, not really complicated, you can use the calculator to do that. But then since the question asks about total distance, yeah, so I guess this is how you solve these four mark questions. A little bit complicated, uh, almost confused me. All right, um, then this is question 13. There's a lot of questions here. Oh my God, I, I hope I can finish it soon. All right, so, okay, for question 13 here, this is solution of triangle. So let's see this equation. So uh, let's say this question. So given the area actually, uh, for A, B, C is 6. So where is my A, B, C? Okay, so, okay, we know this area equals to 6. Then from there, and then A, B, C is obtuse angle, and then this angle is more than 90, less than 180. They call obtuse. Then as we find the A, B, C. So, yeah, we have the area of form, uh, triangle formula, right? Half A, B, sine C. All right, C will be the angle at the middle so i will just use this formula six is my area half 
A and B will be my two sides here, which is 4 and 3.5 sine the angle at the be between, so will be uh, angle sine B. Right, so I just solve this equation normally. This is 2, 2 times this one is 7. So sine B will equal to 6 over 7. Then I will just use the calculator shift sign 6 over 7. And then the calculator should be able to tell me um, my angle. This question doesn't say leave your answer in degree or radian. Then I just leave in the degree maybe because I see some degree here. So I will just leave my answer in degree. So yeah, calculator tell me the B equals to 59. But the problem is, is 59 is the obtuse angle? No, right? So how am I going to get obtuse angle? Very easy. 180 minus 59. This is how you get the angle in the second quadrant. So I will just erase the 59 because it's not the answer. So this one will be 1, 2, 1. Alright, so this is my angle B. Or you can say this is angle A, B, C. Alright, so then I solve the part 1. Part 2, they ask you to find the length of AC. I'm going to find AC since I have this on 1, 2, 1 here. I'm going to find AC is basically is a cosine rule. So yeah, AC square. Yeah, cosine rule, right? 4 square plus 3.5 square minus 4 minus 2 times 4 times, yeah, minus 2 multiply 4 multiply 3.5 and then cos 1, 2, 1. Alright, um, basically it's a formula. A square equals to B square plus C square minus 2BC cos A. Alright, I just use this formula over here. And then as by solving this one using the calculator, I will get the answer easily. I move the square to the other side, so it just square root the whole thing. So I will just type 4 square plus 3.5 square minus 2 times 4 times 3.5 times cos 1 to 1. And then square root my answer. Yeah, AC is 6.53. Alright, it's centimeter. So quite easy for part two. Alright, then they asked me to find the angle BAC. BAC. They asked me to find about this angle. You can use uh, sine rule, no problem. So I will say sine BAC uh, over opposite length, which is 3.5 equals to sine uh, this angle 121 over the opposite length which is AC 6.53 then by doing this one I can get my BAC easily just type the calculator so sine 1 to 1 over 6.53 multiply 3.5 alright then I will get some number then I will going to move my sine from here to the other side become inverse sine 0 0.4 so I just type shift sign my answer just now. So the angle should be 27.35 degree. Alright, then yeah, I done this part also is quite easy. Yeah, this seven mark is kind of the bonus mark for students. So yeah, part B. Uh length of BD is 7.3. Where is my BD? Alright, the middle line is 7.3. This is 7.3. And B C D is 90 degree. B C and D. Alright, this is 90 degree. Alright, then calculate the area of ACD. They ask about area of A, C and D. Okay, they ask about the area for ACD, which is this triangle. Um, okay, here should be quite easy to find. Yeah, this one also should be okay but just three mark maybe i don't think it's so complicated but let me write down all the information i have this one will be 6.53 and this angle a here is basically uh 27.35 all right now i want to find the area here so basically uh what i want to do now is um I'm going to find the whole thing, uh, the big triangle, and then after that, after that, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to find this triangle as well, and then I minus the six because this area here will be six cm square, right? Then I minus the six cm square. Um, here I think I can can I find it? Um, 
uh, yeah, I can find it because um, I this is ninety degrees. This is seven point three. This is three point five. I can use a Pythagoras to get this length. All right, so seven point. Yeah, in order to get this length, because it's ninety degree, right? I use the Pythagoras, so it will be seven point three square. Seven point three square minus three point five square, and I squared it. So I, then I can get C D. So seven point three square minus three point five square, and then square root the answer. Um, then I will get um six point four one centimeter. Then I can get this area half time base time height. It's very easy to get. So I solve this one really. Then I want to solve another one here. All right. Um. Okay. Right now, I kind of need to find the angle ABD here. So in order to do this, I need to know uh what is this angle. So so just now we have the triangle like this, isn't it? So yeah, actually we can find this angle here. I mean, this is BDC by doing the uh, this is three point five, and this is ninety degree. This is seven point three, isn't it? So I can use the cos to actually find the angle. Cos theta. Equals to um three point five over seven point three, then I can find the theta there. So I do shift cos three point five over seven point three here. This is sixty one point three five degree. Then the whole thing is one two one right. So one two one minus the answer just now. Then I guess um yeah I I able to get the the angle here, which is the the angle. A C D angle A C D, uh, uh sorry A B D. Will be uh fifty nine point six five. Alright then, then we should be able to get the, uh, the area easily. Just now we do the Pythagoras, we get this value, isn't it? So uh, seven point three square minus three point five square. And then, square root my answer. Then I will get uh, this is six point four one. All right. Then after I got this angle, now I want to find the whole triangle, uh, both of this triangle, and then minus a six. So I will say area of ACD, which is what they asked us to find, will be okay. This triangle first, so it'll be half time three point five times six point four one, plus another triangle. I have this length and this length, isn't it? Then multiply the angle at the middle, sine angle middle. So it's half times four times seven point three, and then sine fifty nine point six five, and then minus six because six will be uh, the A B C right. So if I minus six, then I will get uh, the triangle that one. So you just use the calculator to solve this thing. It shouldn't be very hard here. Six point four one minus this is two times seven point three times sine fifty nine point six five minus six. Yeah. Oops, the first one is not minus. This one is a plus. Yeah. So you get seventeen point eight two centimeter square. All right. This is how to solve the part B. Yeah, this three mark question kind of need to think a little bit. All right, so over here I will skip the linear programming as usual because uh, I don't like this chat question. But just in fact, if you really like about this question, yeah, you can tell me. Maybe I will make a separate video for this one. All right, then I will go to the last uh, questions of this paper. This is uh index number, so you have some information. So over here, um. This one is the index number of uh, one eight based on one six, and then from this center you know this is index number of two zero based on one eight, and then this one should be one six uh sorry two zero based on one six. All right, so from here before I start to do um, yeah I I kind of need to see some relationship between them. So imagine if index number two o, one six. This one will equals to the index number of two o one eight multiplied index number of one eight one six over hundred. 
Right, it's, uh, this is kind of the formula. So you just imagine if the middle one, 1, 8 and 1, 8, you can simplify it. You get 2, 0 and 1, 6, isn't it? 2, 0, 1, 6. Right, so basically, if you understand about uh, this equation here, you know in order to get x value, basically it's this index number, multiply this, in, uh, multiply this index number, divide by 100, then you get x. So actually it's quite easy. Increase 40, this index number is 140. Unchanged is all hundreds. Decrease 10% will be 90 because for 100, uh, minus 10 will be 90. This is 100. So you can see how it actually remains the same. Basically, this is, uh, in order to get 120, right? It's 120, multiply this one, divide by 100. So you simplify, you get back 120. Okay, if you understand the concept, you can easily get x and y. It's kind of a bonus mark here. So you know, get x right. So it's this index number multiply this index number one one five multiply hundred forty over hundred. Then you can get your x easily. One one five times one four zero and divide by hundreds. So the index number is one six one for x. And then for y, it's the same thing, 140 multiply 90 over 100s. 140 multiply 90 divided by 100s, uh, 126. So y will be 126. Um, and then this is the weightage here. But let's see what the question one. We haven't read the question yet. Yeah, they asked me to find x and y. Very easy, I guess it's about two mark. Calculate the price for ingredient M. In the year 2016, if the price in the 2020 is 6 ringgit 30 cent. So from here, we know we have to use the index number for 2016. Alright, then this is a, a price for 20 over price for 16 times 100. Alright, if you do, don't like about Q for quantity, you can just change it to the P. Alright, but the formula given is actually using the Q. So we need to know what is the index number for the ingredient M here. Okay, so let me scroll up to find why is my M. M is here, and then I want 2016, which is this one, 126. Okay, so I have the index number, 126. Price for 2020, we know is 6 ringgit 30 cent. Uh, this is a price for two, 2016, I do not have that 100. So I will solve this equation to get what is my price for 2016. Alright, so it equals to 6.30 over one point. Two six, then I should be able to get my price easily. Six point six point three divided by one point two six, so it's okay five ringgit. Okay, quite a nice number here. And then they asked me to find the value of p because just now I actually I saw p at a wettage over there. So in order to solve the wettage thing, we need to have the composite index. So the question actually tell us the composite index of the cost making the cake for. 2020 based on 2016 will be 136. Okay, so now we have the index number for this one. So in uh compose uh yeah is the uh, composite index for this one will be 136. Is it 136? I hope I didn't read wrongly. Yeah, composite index index will be 136. So how am I going to get the composite index here? Composite index tell me uh is sum of index that weightage over sum of weightage equals to 136. Alright, so this one is kind of apply the formula, um, nothing very fancy here. So I'm going to show you how am I going to sum them. So index, this is index number, this is weightage. Basically you need to multiply them, something like uh, 1, 2, 4, multiply 5, and then plus 1, 6, 1, multiply 6. This one multiply this one, then you plus all of them, this is the meaning of sum, this is 1, 3, O, P, and then Plus, um, I have not enough space, so I write at the bottom, but in the exam, you should write in the same row, okay? Time 4 plus 120 times 2 divided by the total weightage plus all of this one together. So if this one is 11, 15, 17 plus P will equals to 136. So you need to solve this equation and you can easily get your P here. So you have uh, 620. 161 times 6 uh, plus 966 plus 130p plus 126 times 4 504 plus 240 um, the 
17 plus P, I'm going to move it to the other side. So it will become uh, 136 times 17 plus P. So yeah, let's solve this equation. 620 plus 966 plus 504 plus 240. So this is 2330 plus 130p. And then here I will just solve it uh, using calculator. This is 2312 plus 136p. So this one and this one solve, I left a 6p here. And then 2312, I will use the 2330 minus it. I get 18. So p will equal to 3. Such a nice number for p. So yeah. The weightage of P is just equals to 3 here. So yeah, this one is just apply the formula. Alright, then for part C, they say the cost of baking the cake in 2016 is 25 ringgit. Find the selling price uh, of a cake made in 2020 if the baker intends to make a profit of 180%. Uh, so yeah, this is what I will do. In order to get the profit 80%, I will assume my index number is 100 plus 80, so it will be 180. So in order to get 180 here, so I will say, okay, price for 2020 over price for 2016 times 100, I must get 180. So we have this price, it's given, it's 25 ringgit. So I will just solve this equation to get the price for 2020 if I intend to get to make 80% profit. So this is 1.8 times 25. So then I can know how much I should sell for my cake. So I should sell the cake, which is 45 ringgit, in order to make 80% of the profits. All right, so yeah, it's a little bit exhausted for the part three. But anyways, um, yeah, I hope you at least you can learn something from my video. I hope I doesn't make mistake because for this kind of long content video, I actually like take it one shot. So sometimes I might make uh, some carry mistake. If you find out any mistake, do let me know. If you like which part you find very confused, you do let me know. All right, so I guess that's all for the video today. So I'm going to see you guys in the next video. All right, bye-bye.